So yes, as you've clearly seen and heard, I'm going to tell you about something quite a bit different in this last part. And so what I want to tell you about is something that is extremely familiar to you, essentially a droplet of a liquid that hits onto the ground. And so this has happened thousands of times to you so far, most likely even once today. And what I'd like to show you is that while this is a most familiar phenomenon, it's actually one that completely defies our normal intuition. And so you have witnessed a splashing droplets thousands of times, but maybe never had the possibility to look at it close enough in order to actually see what's happening in detail. And so in our lab, we can do that because we have high-speed cameras that allow us to film these droplet impacts at about 50,000 frames per second. And so what I'd like to show you in this video is a drop of ethanol that is going to impact a large light that is somewhere below here. And so I stopped the movie here just for a second to point out that this is our drop. You can ignore this bright spot in the middle because it's simply because we backlight our drop, so it's an optical artifact. You see down here the reflection of the drop, and you see that in just a second it's going to impact the blush light that is right here. Here we go. And so really each time you spill a drop of water, this is what's happening. You see it hits, it creates this thin sheet, this thin sheet then breaks up into thousands of droplets. And so the details of how exactly this splash look like depend on quite a few parameters. So I introduced the viscosity before, and clearly viscosity is important here as well. A drop of honey is not going to splash the same way as a drop of water. And so I show you here a drop of somewhat higher viscosity, about 10 times the viscosity of water. And you see, it looks quite a bit different, but again, we have this thin sheet, which eventually breaks up into these droplets. And so the viscosity matters, but it's also important on which substrate the drop is actually going to fall. And so, I'd like to show you how a drop looks very differently if it now hits a somewhat rough substrate. So you saw that in this case, the drop was immediately ejecting these droplets right at the contact line. And so clearly viscosity matters, substrate roughness matters, if I ask you what else you think might be important for how exactly this drop splashes, you might come up with guesses like the drop size could be important. And that's true. The surface tension could be important. Also true. The impact velocity could be important. How fast the drop hits. And all of these are very good guesses and they really influence the outcome of a splash. So we see that both liquid properties and substrate properties determine the outcome of a drop impact. What I don't tell you about is anything about the air, and that is clearly because how could the air matter? I mean, I hardly feel the air. But then, think about this. When you are in your car and you put out your hand out of the window of your driving car, you feel a drag force, a drag force that comes from the air. So what this means is that the air provides some resistance to any object that goes through it, and so, what would now happen to such a splash if you now simply take out some of the air? And so I just told you that there's some resistance because of the air. So taking out the air will, ta will take away some of that resistance, and what I can get is a splash that is essentially even bigger because my droplets can be ejected more easily from this drop. And so, just to remind you how these droplets look like under normal air conditions, so at atmospheric pressure, I'd like to show you this video one more time. Now, 
In this next video, I'm going to show you the exact same droplet, exact same conditions, falling from the same height. The only difference in this second video is that I took out some of the air. So I decreased the air pressure to about one third of atmospheric pressure. And one third isn't even that low. One third is essentially the pressure that we have on top of Mount Everest. So you could live under these conditions, not very happily, but you could. And so I told you that this will reduce the air resistance. So let's see this big splash. And seeing this really blew us away. I mean, this shouldn't have happened. And what it really tells us is that a drop that splashes here in Boston is not going to splash on top of Mount Everest. And to me, this is still one of the craziest things I've ever heard. But it tells us that the air, something we would never have expected, is actually a really, really important control parameter for these splashes. And so, this is a very robust effect. So I have introduced these splashes at low viscosity, high viscosity, smooth surfaces, rough surfaces, but as different as these splashes look, they have one thing in common, which is that as I lower the pressure, the splash disappears. So given how robust this effect is, it must have a common cause. So what is it really? that the air does, why is the air so important, and what really is it doing? And so this is what I'd like to show you, but unfortunately, we can't see the air. But as physicists, we have some tricks in order to make the invisible visible. And so for the photographers among you, what we do is we use optical techniques, we use clear and imaging in order to make these air flows visible. So what you're seeing in this video, and I just want to quickly stop it here, is again a drop. It impacts this slide, but what I want you to pay attention to now is these gray lines that you see, which are representative of the motion of the air. And so this is what the air is doing. Every single time you have a drop that falls onto your table, this is what's happening. And so we can zoom in a little bit in order to better see what's going on. So we see these vortex rings here, these uh, curled up sheets that start to form. <coughs> and if I stop the video here, I can point out a couple features. So this one here is essentially the air in the wake of the drop. So the air that gets put in motion because the drop falls through it. This part here is the air that was below the drop and gets, it, gets essentially pushed out as the drop hits the surface. And this part here is a small vortex ring that occurs because the drop is very rapidly spreading out. And so are these airflows really the cause of why a splash disappears at low pressure and therefore smaller airflows? So in order to find that out, what we can do is, again, look at what are the control parameters that govern these phenomena. And so for the airflows, it's actually remarkably simple. The only thing that determines these airflows are the impact velocity, are the air viscosity, and the drop size. Now, if we look at the parameters, that set our condition at lower pressure if a drop splashes or not, it turns out that this is way more complicated. So there's a whole bunch of, of parameters that determine the splashing threshold at which the splash disappears at low pressure. And what this tells us, that clearly these aren't the same control parameters, and therefore the airflow, airflows aren't what's governing the splash. 
So we still don't have the answer, which is good because it still gives us a lot to do. And uh, what we have done, seen though in these studies is I believe we have seen fluid dynamics really at its most beautiful. And so science in general is a very collaborative field. And so this work involves many people and in particular tonight, I would like to thank my students, all of them, but in particular, Jay and Cheng, who helped create the patterns, that, who helped create your tickets in the very beginning and who are doing beautiful work. And Sydney Nagel, my collaborator on a lot of what I showed you tonight from the University of Chicago, an inspiration to everything I do. And uh, with this, I hope I have showed you that the phenomena of pattern growth is full of surprises. And we are only at the very beginning of actually starting to understand the deep and the complex science behind it. What it seems to be telling us, though, is that nature is really very, very subtle and very often very wondrous. And so on a very personal note, so these studies, they really give me a continuous renewal of my appreciation of the world around me. And I hope that I could share this a little bit with you tonight. Thank you very much.